Diablo developer reveals why they can never make a good Diablo game. Hey, I'm really glad you're here. I've been playing a lot of Last Epoch lately. It's a really good new action role-playing game. It's an amazing game. While I've been playing it, it's made me reflect a lot on my time as a designer on Diablo 3, the decisions we made and why we made them. Most of all, I realized that, you know what? We could never have made a game like Last Epoch. Let's talk about why. Okay. I want to just preface this with I'm not at all bagging on the Diablo 3 team. These are... I am. They're incompetent and bad. And same with the Diablo 4 team. Because in my eyes, Diablo 4 has already been made into Diablo 3.1 essentially at this point. My perspectives alone, the team that I worked with there is probably one of the best that I've worked with in my entire life. But, but they somehow magically made a complete trash game. Hmm, wonder how that happens. I have the utmost of respect for all of them. This is more reflection on the kinds of choices and why we made them not trying to identify or single out anyone on the team for making bad decisions. I, if you want to focus on anyone, focus on me. Let's start with the skill system, because even though Last Epoch is wildly complicated, I actually think that's what most action role-playing gamers want. Like I said, the... Yes, and it's not wildly complicated, by the way. The reality of the Last Epoch skill system and why it works is very simple. You just read what it does, and it just tells you what it does, and it's really easy to understand. It's not com This is not complicated in the slightest. This is just you hover over it and read what it does, and then you think to yourself, do I want it to do this? And if so, you just, just click on it. It's super simple. Last Epoch system is wildly complicated. Not only do you have your passives that you get to pick every time you level up, you have a subclass that you're fixed into, which you can then also spend passives into. Spending passives unlocks even more skills. And then on top of that, you have the active skills and all of the complexity and subclassing that you can focus on and specialize in within a skill itself. This is incredible. It like, it basically allows you to tailor and build a very, very specific class. Yes. And as it turns out to the shock of literally no one but Blizzard developers, people actually really like that. People want that. People want to be able to customize their characters more than just what the damage types they do. And it also gives you this promise of endless opportunities to explore and customize. This is not something we were able to do on Diablo 3. Fundamentally- Couldn't do? Or chose not to do because you're weak? I kind of think it's the latter. Like overarching everything, we wanted to aim at a broader audience than just Diablo. We didn't just want to capture the Diablo audience. We Why? wanted to expand upon it. The best way to do that is to create systems that are much more approachable, which usually means trade-offs in that complexity. This wasn't- Well, as we know, that's a stupid choice, okay? So, you have this IP, Diablo, Diablo 1 and 2, extremely successful. Put Blizzard on the map, in fact, to a degree. One of the most highly acclaimed games, a really good seller for the time, even. And you're just looking at that and saying, yeah, these, these people who made the game super successful, popular, and, you know, people talked about this for, you know, decades? Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah. I, I don't know how you justify thinking like this. How, how do you justify just, you know, saying, oh, oh, yeah, these people? Nah, we don't want them. We want the new audience. How, how do you make these decisions? For a lack of trying, I remember the team who was focused on the skill system went back and forth. They, I think they built out like 12 different full iterations on the skill system. There was even one where you had your dominant skill, like the Barbarian Leap, for example, and then instead of there being fixed skill choices that there are today, 
you actually had runes that you could go out and find and then those runes slotted into your skill like barbarian link i remembered this this was pretty much the only alternative skill system ever anyone ever talked about and then they said oh it's too hard it's too much work and they added different properties those runes had different affixes on them so they could come with plus strength or plus crit they also had different levels yeah because everyone wants plus strength and plus crit because you know that made diablo 3 successful in the same way that a lot of the items have so Jesus. there was more power in some of them and less in others there was this kind of endless chase game the great irony is i argued hard against that idea i was like this is way too complicated people are just gonna like try and figure out the best solution they're gonna have end up with this inventory nightmare it's not something that we can really expect our audience to do i regret that really i, I do think that that skills wow that is that is a really bad and sad thing to honestly say oh it's gonna be an inventory nightmare then make it not an inventory thing how how about that you get these runes and they don't are not in the inventory how about that magical solution system would have been probably better than what we have today at least for the more pure diablo audience but i am happy with the skill system that we have again it broadens the audience it brings more people into the the possibility and how did that work out for you what what do you want 10 10 decent people or 20 people that half of them are murderers i mean it's a very easy pick the space of playing and exploring action role-playing games on top of that we just really didn't have a deep enough stat system uh that allowed for that level of complexity the stat system is kind of the then you make the stat system deep enough and complex enough part of all these other things that can impact it also this is such an ironic thing to say considering how absolutely ludicrously simplified the diablo 3 stat system is you literally just had damage and defense you, you didn't care about anything else just just the overall damage number and defense diablo diablo 3 effectively still to this day has only two stats on your character sheet defense and damage and you effectively don't care about anything as long as those numbers go up if the stat system at its core is quite simple then the number of other methods or tools or ways that you can impact that and change those stats is, very limited. is limited yes just by its nature see this is why i'm extremely against the diablo 4 season 4 itemization changes because it is literally taking all the potential complexity out of the game that already was bad by the way and kind of weak anyway and now it's just going the diablo 3 route this is pathetic take something like death must die right like look at the stat sheet for that there are so many different stats on there you see this looks fun this looks interesting that just add to the whole possibility space for what they can do with different items you can play into all these different stats they have luck they have all these crazy things that we just don't have by having a broad stat system it allows for all the other things to be like items like skills like passives it allows for them to to be more complicated or yes. more detailed or add more like and that means they're more interesting like specificity of choice we yes. erred away from that we kept a much simpler stat system that was more clearly aligned it was easy to identify like okay i'm a barbarian i want these and we thought that that was the right choice to make but how do these guys even how do you i'm i'm so pissed and disappointed about when i when i hear stuff like this he's essentially telling you hey uh yeah you're too stupid to figure out that a wizard probably does not need to max out strength this this is literally saying that come back maybe it wasn't trading support oh man last epoch nails this they're obviously the trading system they nail is super everything robust. You basically have two different factions that you can choose and then progression within each faction. The factions are kind of designed for this player wants to use an auction house or they call it the barter system, I think. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong there. They also have like a self-found progression or reputation that you can lean into, which modifies, allows you to target like certain types of items. 
It's such a robust system. It, I think actually like most action role-playing games should be looking at Last Epoch's trading system solution and asking themselves, wow, what can we learn from this? How can we pull from this to make ours better? Because I really think that they nail it. The really important thing here is that the self-bound versus the auction house solution, it tailors itself to different types of play style. There are other players out there that they don't want to touch an auction house. They don't want to do any kind of trading. Yep. Any kind of trading that they're comfortable with is probably more along the nuanced, like, I just want to trade with my friends or something along those kind of lines. They don't want to have to, like, expose themselves to a broader, bigger, like, auction house type system. And yet there are the auction house type players. They really enjoy this feeling of, like, finding this great item. It's not great for them, but it's probably great for, say, you know, a wish doctor or something. Then they can list it and sell. Go witch Again, doctor. the great thing here is that they're solving uh, problems for different audiences that have different play styles. Yeah, unlike Diablo that doesn't do any of that. Our focus for solving the trading problem wasn't really about how can we let players trade. I mean, that was it, but it was more around like, how can we create a safe environment for players to trade within? We were looking at the guts of Diablo 2 and Diablo 2 has this like rampant black market auction house functionally where people are able to trade and they buy. Yeah, I was a bit, I, I still have like 2K of a GSP gold gold in order to trade and and much of the time by getting access to that gold they risk having their accounts hacked and that's just fundamentally a terrible user experience so again we came never got my account hacked back to well what's the best way to provide players with this way to trade in the way that they're doing right now but in a safe environment and we came to the auction house this also led to a lot of decisions around the real money auction house. If players were actively out there buying gold for real money, well, let them do that. Why not? Though we were able to provide people with that safe trading environment, we made so many mistakes with the auction house. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to talk about this. Yeah, well, I mean, everything, every decision made for Diablo 3 was a giant mistake. I think I'm actually going to talk about this. Do we care? I think we don't, right? So, yeah, sure. We created this system for people to trade. Yeah, no one cares about the auction house. I actually liked it. For each their own. Crafting. Let's talk about crafting. Um, in Last Epoch, it fills a really interesting hole in the action role-playing game because of the way that you can use crafting to kind of build an item off of a base item by leaning on or using their crafting material to focus the crafting on specific assets or maybe just replace an affix that you didn't like or that rolled it it kind of it opens the potential of what an item can be as opposed to it just being i'm going to salvage it and replace it for Diablo 3, you know, our crafting system there was much more of just a way for you to randomly create items. Some with fixed stats, but really the fixed stats were pretty limited. You didn't have many choices. Oh, oh, this crafting. Oh, I, I was thinking, what the hell is this guy even talking about? Yeah, this only lasted in the very first iteration of the game. By his items, I can already tell that this is one of the most earliest uh, things in the game that happens. Well, actually, no, he has Piranha Storm, so... Uh, but yeah, this is still... I, I think this is still pretty early on. Oh, no, this is not early on. There's Paragon levels, and he's in the thousands. Okay, so, yeah, no one does this. N crafting completely died after, essentially, effectively, what was the first iteration of the game. After that, crafting became completely useless. You maybe sometimes crafted an item when you're uh, level. Uh, when, when you had something that's very low level, just to replace it real quick. But you didn't give a shit. Voices, and then everything else was random. It was basically just like the ability to spawn a creature in front of you and then kill it and get it to spawn out loot. Yes, that's pretty almost accurate without the creature. The last epoch crafting system, it kind of expands your mental filter on what a good item is. You're not just looking for a good item for your current character, not just an up arrow, right? Like you're kind of a... Yeah. Also, the moment Diablo 3 came out, 
everyone was pissed that effectively the game is now just up at oh good and <laughs> what what kind of stance does it have? I don't, I don't fucking know. Who cares? It's a, it's an up at oh and that's all that matters. And the Ablo floor is literally right there. Evaluating almost every item, not only on what just rolled, but also on what it has the potential to be. For us, for the crafting, the focus was much more around it being an alternative funnel for all the items that were being created. If you imagine the full economy of Diablo 3, especially at you know peak, there were billions of items being created every second. Well, how do you get those items out of the economy without them all just turning into gold or turning into trash on an auction house? Well, crafting is a viable solution because you can break it down into salvage. It's not a one-to-one -one thing. It's always lossy. And then you craft a new thing, which is again, always lossy. The problem is there just wasn't really- Oh my God, look at this gameplay. This is the future of Diablo for this right here. And it's coming. Again, it's like Todd Ferguson is just stealing bad ideas from Diablo 3 and implementing them. And everyone's like, yay, I'm a mouth breather. I. I, I played Diablo 3 and I liked it. I love this change, Todd. And the numbers of players go down and down and down and down constantly. And it's like, yeah, you were doing, Todd's like, yeah, you were doing a good thing. Look at how the players are going down and everyone's saying it's good. <sighs> what a shit show. The motivation to do it. I did the design for the crafting, so I'm fully happy to own all the grief and bad comments flood the comment thing below with all the negative thoughts that you had about the original crafting system for Diablo. I'll probably just thumbs up and agree with all of them. Hey, at least it was useful. At least crafting had a use in Diablo 3. Again, you know, you were level uh, level 30 and you didn't have a level 30 something. You just crafted it up and that was it. Pretty simple. At least it had a use. It was super niche, and after that, it just didn't exist. But hey, at least it had some niche uses. The reality is, we just didn't have time to iterate on it. Even in the world of Blizzard's done when it's done, there is still a it's done enough kind of phase. It just depends on the scale of the feature. It, it was planned for us to iterate on the crafting system for the expansion, but again, it just it took a lower priority once we realized the strength of adventure mode and the different systems that were being suggested, which kind of filled the gap. Oh yeah, there was something about this crafting. This is this is kind of new-ish, I think. Well, I recognize all of these things, but this is effectively kind of new-ish. And I don't know if people actually use this. But yeah, this is one of the newer things. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of crafting, but you don't really also use it. It's like... It's more like a button you press because you don't care time to time because you kind of need to. It's not really a system. It's like a requirement that, you know, pops up every now and then. Systems that were being suggested, which kind of filled the gap of what crafting was trying to do. End Especially for game. the launch of Diablo 3, we just didn't focus on the end game enough. Hardly at all. Almost all of our focus was put onto the level up experience, um, specifically one through four acts in normal difficulty and the story and the narrative component to it. Last Epoch's endgame. I did like the level up experience in Diablo 3 though. I actually did. I think it was, I think it was smooth, fast and whatnot enough. Game is, is really solid. It, it kind of combines a lot of things from, you know, it learns a lot from Path of Exile. It feels like it's a natural extension of the game. In fact, in some way, I kind of just wish that I went straight there as opposed to having to go through the narrative campaign. It's like, just get me to the end game. That seems more fun. On Diablo 3, we didn't really focus on an end game as we were developing it. We are, most of our effort was focused solely on acts one through four in normal difficulty. Most of it was focused on telling an amazing story. To be completely honest, we were actually- No wonder people were so pissed with Inferno. We were quite late in development before we really started testing it. I remember pretty clearly, I was playing at home. I, my oldest son had just been born, so I was allowed to take a laptop home and play um, from home and do play testing. And I remember I defeated Diablo and then I was supposed to just- this was a good fight. Say what you will, the Diablo fight was actually good. It was it, it, it was challenging enough of a boss. 
If only a single other fight in Diablo 4 would be even remotely close to, uh, to this. Say what you will, the Diablo fight in Diablo 3 is a really good fight. It is, it is actually good. It requires... Well, except the shadow phase at the start when there were situations where the shadow spawns and it one-shots you because balancing. But other than that, the Diablo 5 was good. Just transition into the next difficulty and it just broke. There were things that you needed to avoid, things that you needed to understand, mechanics that you needed to learn. It was an actually good fight. And I'm like, okay, I guess we haven't gotten here yet. And this is actually like, honestly, I mean, this is a year, year and a half. What other uh, fights were good? Honestly? Hmm, let me think about it a little bit. Uh, King Leoric fight did not feel bad. Definitely did not feel bad. A little bit cheesy, yes, but definitely did not feel bad. Because the Leoric fight felt like more like a DPS check. Then there was the Spuider. Mm, that was that that was okay, but it wasn't the greatest fight ever. But it was it was good. It was good. Then there was the butcher fight. The butcher fight was also pretty good, I have to say. Yeah. Then there was Act Two. What was in Act Two? There was Zoltan Cool. I don't think. Oh, the last fight in uh, against Belial. Ah. Uh, that was pretty good, but, the, uh, but the, there was no rhyme and reason sometimes uh, for the RNG of the things uh, that fell from the sky, so that sucked. And uh, the uh, ad, ad, uh, ad part at the start also sucked. Let's see, what else? I'm not sure, but Diablo, uh, Diablo 3 actually had meaningful, impactful boss fights that mattered unlike diablo 4 where every boss fight is even more dipshit chickenry okay man i didn't even remember how good some boss fights in diablo 3 were yeah they they actually were fun especially the diablo one well i don't remember anything of reaper of souls i think those those fights were complete ass and garbage i'm pretty sure most of those fights were just here's fire when blah, 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 blah. uh the last fight in Reaper of Souls was okay-ish, but then th th at that point I feel that the game completely went over on, hey, here's random shit on the ground. Have fun. Yeah. Well, in Diablo 3 initially when they released, there were things that, you know, put stuff on the ground, but none of those things were like, oh, this is just randomly there. It was, yeah, you need to avoid this now. <laughs> And I like those fights. Those are well-made uh, fights. I completely forgot this about Diablo 3. The fight, the boss fights were good. Half out from shipping. We also didn't do any kind of public test of the end game of Diablo. A lot of this was due to concerns of releasing the story too early. But looking back, I mean, I think it was probably a mistake not to even just put it out there and let people test it in some way, shape or form, even if it was in a limited way. I think we would have learned so much more rather than waiting to release and having to fix or try and solve problems on the fly in a live environment. You know, our assumption was that people would play Diablo 3 in the same way that they played Diablo 2. But the reality is, there was a lot of- How can you make Diablo 3 not for the old fans because your old audience is too small and not good enough any longer? And then you have this magical expectancy of, Oh yeah, people are gonna play Diablo 3 like they did too. Bruh, you made it for a completely different audience. You, you, you're admitting you made a completely different game intentionally. And you think it's gonna go like Diablo 2? How, how, how do you make these decisions? years between d2 and d3 gaming landscape had changed mmos had come out there was a whole new way of playing games in that kind of way at the end game and our audience was different as well they hit this point where in d2 it would have been natural to go oh i can't beat this i need to go back into earlier content in order to farm gear yeah the players that we were targeting the broad audience that we suddenly had yeah they hated it by the way I, I never understood this. Now I actually understand because watching this video. I did not understand the people who were pissed that they can't do Inferno. Like, what do you mean? Just 
yeah, you unlocked Inferno, but you're too weak for it. Grind some gear, grind some upgrades in the previous difficulty. What do you mean, my dude? And there were so many people, I can't do Inferno. Wee! Make Inferno. I loved Inferno because it was so hot. It required you to, f to find specific build paths, specific things, and acquire gear. I liked it. It was a good experience. But since this is a new audience of complete, you know, pussies, essentially. Well, completely, not essentially even. They, they just complained about Inferno being too hot. Inferno wasn't too hot. It just required you to, you know, put in a little bit of effort. They didn't play that way. They got to a certain point. They died and they realized, well, I just need to try again and hammer their face against it. And that wasn't the right solve. We were kind of relying on this D2 mentality that probably just didn't exist anymore. And our, our end game- Because you chose to kill it. And was, hey, Inferno is hard. Grind forever to get perfect six affixes on your items. And that's the end game. Because again, that was Diablo 2. But they didn't want that. To be fair, we tried to solve some of this by providing activities. We patched things in like the Infernal Machine. It was just that. It was a it was a patch. It, it wasn't a solution. I mean, I remember staying up really late at work um, with Dead Mouse playing super loud because no one else was in the office, and I was just cramming items in for the Infernal Machine. I, that, I think that's when Squirt was created, actually. Um, they don't know but yeah, what just that cramming is. in items for the Infernal Machine so that the rest of the team could start building out the encounters, the creatures, whatever was needed uh, on the Monday. We got there eventually, you know, I think we got there eventually with the expansion, but it was a long, hard road and we needed to do a lot of re like repair with the community to earn back their trust. I don't just want to bag on Diablo. I kind of want to focus on a couple of things that I think that we actually did way better than last Epoch did, because I think it's worth Forex. acknowledging those things as well. I mean, did you do anything actually better though? I would be surprised if he has really anything to, any examples that I will agree here with. Okay, skill feel. This one always, always gets me and it makes it actually kind of hard for me to play games sometimes that don't do this well. And it's the responsiveness of abilities. In fact, I think the reason why Diablo 3 was so- Oh, yeah, 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 okay, he found one. Okay, I agree with this, actually. Uh, this was, this is was a thing, a criticism I'm still t uh, saying about Last Epoch, still. Still, okay? You need to make skills look better at the start of the game. You need to make them feel more impactful and better and more responsive. Because that matters a lot. In Diablo, in Diablo 3 and 4, all skills are impactful and responsive. Well, not impactful, okay, let's be real. Some of them, especially in Diablo 4, are blatantly unusable garbage. But they're at least responsive. They're at le they at least look always good. And that's what Last Epoch is lacking. That is true. But you can easily argue Last Epoch, a, bu a bunch of guys that, you know, uh, played Diablo 3, said it's shit, and, you know, then they created their own game. Because that's what Last Epoch effectively is. They don't have the millions and billions and money that they can spend on polish like this, sadly. And I think they're gonna improve it a lot over time, hopefully. Because that's seriously what they need to do to just get in more players. Because people uh, people like responsive things. People like skills that feel good. And Diablo 3 and 4 does it. Well, skills don't, some skills don't feel good, but you get the point. So successful for so long, withstanding all the challenges of, you know, bad loot and the- But also do not misunderstand this. After a day or two of playing, the fact that a skill doesn't feel as responsive as Diablo 3 or 4 is not going to be enough to, uh, enough of a criticism to make people stop playing Last Epoch. And the fact that the only part about Diablo that's good is the skills, how they look, how they feel, and how, they, how responsive they are, that's not going to be enough to keep players playing a shit game. The auction house and the launch issues, all that sort of stuff, and no endgame is because the moment to moment actually just feels amazing and we spent so much time working on that diablo kind of 
Ruined. True. That's why everyone stops playing Diablo when the moment the moment stuff ends. It's just not worth it. It's just bad. It for me for like almost every other game because the first thing I do is I'm like, okay, what does it feel like to click this ability and then try and cast another ability? How closely tied are they? Do I feel like there's lag involved? Diablo 3 nails that really well. This is actually something, I mean, Diablo 4, it kind of bugs me. Like Diablo 4 doesn't do it this well. It's my biggest complaint about Diablo 4 is that they don't have that same responsiveness of abilities. A good uh, no, the Diablo 4 abilities are responsive, but the problem is Diablo 4 abilities, a bunch of them are just unusable. They're just really, really bad. It's, it's just the truth. The, uh, most the uh, most abilities in Diablo 4 are complete trash. Again, Season 4 Necromancer minions are gonna be great, but Diablo 4 launched and we had three seasons of Diablo uh, of Necromancer minions. Necromancer and minions did not work because minions just felt bad and shit. How is that even allowed? Good test for this is can you stutter step? Can you like move in one direction cast in another move in one direction cast in another or can you be casting like a chain? don't know if that's a good test but if you can do it yeah game is worse chain lightning you can do this in last epoch P uh, pad of exile diablo 2 diablo 3 diablo 4 i it's something that you should have because if you can't have it then your animations are probably bad spell and then interweave another spell without having to feel like you need to stop casting entirely and then start clicking and cast the next one intentionally. There are all these different features that we put in place. We had interrupts like tied to keyframes on the animations. There was a really clever spell queuing system that a couple of the engineers put together. There was so much time and effort. This is Diablo 4 soon. This is unironically what the end game for Diablo 4 is gonna do because Todd is a moron. Effort that was invested there. A really good friend of mine, Julian Love, did a GDC talk, sort of getting into some, just some of the details here. It's worth checking it out. I'll try to put a, a link to it in the comments below. I also think in Diablo 3, the, the story is just kind of overall better than in Last Epoch. Like I said. I don't know about that. You killed Kane and he got killed by a, a butterfly lady. I'm not sure if the story's better. I'm pretty sure Diablo 3's one one of the distinctive features that people hated about it was how absolutely blatantly shit the story was. We spent a lot of time and effort in it, and I'm not talking about the cinematics. I'm not I don't think anyone else especially has the ability to do cinematics at the same scale or quality that Blizzard did, or it still does. It's more about the characters that you meet and the story arc and your own personal character. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, as I, as I told as as I told before, it is pretty bad. The uh, Diablo three players are not satisfied with the shit ass story being told in Diablo three. You got Asmodeus, the, the the genius general of hell, who just fucking tells you his plan because I mean, why not? The development. Uh, it's that, so bad. I think that paid off a lot more in Diablo 3 than at least I got in Last Epoch. I'm not even the kind of story type person. I'm the person that tries to like skip through a lot of the text, but I still got a lot more connection with the characters. You know, there's no character in Last Epoch that I met that is as memorable as Covetous Shen, right? Like those kind of... I, I vaguely remember who is Covetous Shen, the, the, the guy who steals shit? Characters. They just they stick with you. Oh no. Hello. Is there oh, it is the guy in the battle. There? It's it's the gem dude. Another thing that I think. Also, I I remember the name, but dude, that's not an impressive character. That Diablo three does really well is you know pacing. We we spread the systems out over time. We didn't just like put them all up front, upload them. If you load up Last Epoch. Everything is available to you straight away. You can jump into passives. You can jump into skill customization and specialization. You can jump. That's not a bad thing. Into the crafting system. And holy mackerel, is it overwhelming with just how much information there is? Yeah. Yeah. 
for some people for sure so you need to take it slowly but then again like he's saying this like it's a bad thing but you did the opposite and your game's a fucking garbage dumpster fire and the new one goes the same route and again it turns into a garbage dumpster fire so i mean did you actually do these things better i'm pretty sure you didn't i clearly remember there was a time we were working um and the game director jay walked into the room and he started writing up the different features that we had in the game you know, blacksmithing and jewel crafting all the different sort of subsystems that we had and he pointed out these are all being released in act one and it's overwhelming everything who the hell got overwhelmed by this tell me who who look at this there's five different gems who is getting overwhelmed by this who's getting overwhelmed by the crafting system the fact that you can even believe that humans are going to get overwhelmed by something this little is kind of offensive to me. A normal person is not going to get overwhelmed by this screen right here. Holy. Dang, act 1 was already one of our biggest acts. And then to also expect players to learn all these other systems all at once, it was just too much. So we intentionally spread them out across the yeah you spread them out and when then people got them they didn't fucking care because those were bad systems like he's essentially saying here oh yeah if last epoch and other games give you too much freedom to do things and explore things that's bad that, that i'm sorry that's bad what do you mean that's bad how is it bad is like who got oh i i, I want to know if there's a single person in history who has gotten overwhelmed by you know clicking on the gem crafting in diablo 3 or 4 or whatever no one exactly the rest of the game and i think that helps people on board and get a good feeling for what those systems are because they have they they're useless yeah that that's your onboard feeling they've got room to breathe you know they have time to experiment with it time to think about it well okay this is a flawed argument because uh when you when you get the systems in last epoch when you when you notice them when you see them and you get a skill point and you're supposed to uh, put it somewhere there it's it doesn't overwhelm you uh, too much to be completely frank when you get your fur uh, skill tree for a skill in last epoch you're level three four i don't even remember at this point but it's so fast and you only have like three basic skills accessible at that time depending on the class and that's not overwhelming but when you see the crafting you don't have to interact with it when you when you when you level up and you get a uh, get a passive skill point to put uh, put in you 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 you're instantaneously brought to your basic thing and yeah you can click on other ones but you're still gonna only have like two or three options well usually it's three uh, three options uh, on level one and then you just read what they do oh this is damage oh this the, the this is defensives this is some kind of regeneration resource or whatever it's not complicated the first points are not even designed to be complicated time to come back try it again before they get impacted by the next big system that they need to start trying to have to understand <laughs> And then the enemies in Diablo 3, I think, are just... They were fucking horrible. Way more interesting than they are in Last Epoch. No. We always approached the enemy design. No, the, the, the enemy design is just just sad here, okay? You got... Uh, this is the desert area. You, you, got, you got the guys that one-shot you. You got some more guys that potentially one-shot you. It's just bad. And as families i think the fallen are a really good example that we we inherited of course from Diablo. no one likes the fallen too and i think that's where we got the idea of thinking about the enemies as families as opposed to individual one-offs by thinking about them as families we were able to intentionally design how they related to each other what their abilities were what they played off what they played on their own was as fine but then when you started tying like a fallen grunt with a shaman oh yeah things unlocked right like same thing with goatmen right like they all kind of play off of each other goatmen maybe not as well as the fallen but still we designed those as a family 
Absolute BS. I, I don't agree with this. It's not bad design, per se. Well, some of the, it is extremely poor design. And Diablo 4 is Omega poor uh, design for creatures. Like, well, everything Diablo 4 is Omega poor design, in my honest opinion. But, you know, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, uh, that was Andrew Chambers designing, uh, designing plays. Completely new, but very interesting, you know. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be more stuff from him, so... I guess it would be interesting to hear more how a Diablo uh, developer keeps ruining games because yeah everything I he uh, heard here is just a mistake and it's being repeated in Diablo 4 now it's crazy anyway this was Quizzer Sid saying thanks for watching subscribe have a nice day bye bye